The Asian market is undoubtedly the NBA's second most important economic engine, behind only the US market. This is led by China, with its 1.4 billion inhabitants and enormous growing love for basketball, is the country that generates the second most revenue for the best basketball league in the world. However, despite the NBA's huge presence in China, there don't seem to be many elite-level players from the East. A shocking phenomenon considering that, like a pop culture craze, the NBA tends to raise the level of play in the regions where its products sold. In the league's entire history, only 18 players of Asian descent have ever landed a spot on one of its rosters. However, massive cultural globalization is turning the tables on Asia's significance in world basketball. But what is the continent's historical past, and what can we expect from them in the future? Unlike the other continents where the debate is getting more heated by the day, the GOAT debate in Asia has a clear favorite. When 7'6 Yao Ming came to the NBA with the first pick in the 2002 draft by the Houston Rockets, basketball fans around the world saw this player as today's fan see Victor Wembanyama, an alien arriving in America to change basketball forever. And in a similar way, he managed to make a difference early on. Yao was chosen in the All-Star game during his first season in the league, partly also because of his enormous support in Asia, which overwhelmingly voted to send him to the All-Star weekend. In fact, his influence was so great that he's been one of only five players, and the only one during the 21st century, to be selected to the All-Star game during each and every active season of his career. An incredible milestone for a player who averaged 25 points per game during the 2006-2007 season, but never advanced past the second round of the playoffs in Houston whilst playing with Tracy McGrady. But his career ended very prematurely with a foot injury that occurred during the 2009 playoffs, which would initially only keep him off the court for about 10 weeks. However, his enormous size greatly complicated his recovery, and doctors realized that he would probably never be the same. Yao was recovering from the injury for over a year, and after returning during the following season and playing five games, he suffered a setback that sent him back to the sidelines. Sadly, that game against the Wizards in which he could only play six minutes was his last dance on the NBA. Nevertheless, Yao had already become an iconic player. His record included eight NBA All-Star selections and five All-NBA team selections that made him the best Asian player in basketball history and the first Asian player to be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. But for the Chinese center to make it to the North American radar, there were other players who paved the way. When Yao arrived in the NBA, there were only eight Asian players capable of getting a spot on a roster. And certainly most of these names are quite unknown to the average fan. Japan's Wataro Misaka was the first to do so after leading the University of Utah to an NCAA championship. After being drafted by the New York Knicks, Masaka was able to play a total of three games in the NBA, in which he became a pioneer of an entire continent. Another one of the most prominent names prior to the arrival of Yao Ming was the Lebanese Ronnie Sekele. The Beirut-born player managed to play 11 seasons in the league, and in 10 of them he averaged more than 10 points per game, besides being the first and only Asian to have won the Most Improved Player Award. Or the also Chinese Menki Batir who, despite being a very secondary player, was the first Asian player to win a championship ring with the San Antonio Spurs. But without any doubt, Yao's arrival meant a before and after in the search for Asian talent, especially when we're talking about China. Seven-foot-tall Yi Jian Lian was drafted in the sixth position of the 2007 draft by the Milwaukee Bucks, and since the beginning of his career, he was considered by many as the new Yao Ming. However, despite being a good basketball player, E could only play five seasons in the NBA, in which he never averaged more than 12 points and seven rebounds per night. Years later, in 2012, one of the greatest stories in NBA history took place, and it starred an Asian player. In February of that same season, undrafted sophomore Jeremy Lin suddenly became one of the biggest stars of the moment. After appearing in only nine of the 22 games the Knicks had played that season and playing a total of 54 minutes, Lin began to shine as a true franchise player. A phenomenon that was known as Lin's sanity made the front pages of all the sports media around the world. It seemed more like the plot of a fictional movie than a real event. Lin averaged 25 points per game for the next 10 games after his breakout game against the New Jersey Nets, including a game winner against the Toronto Raptors and a 38-point game against Kobe Bryant's Los Angeles Lakers. And although his career was that of an above-average player, injuries ended up shortening his time in the NBA, forcing him to retire at the age of 30. Coincidentally, the same age Yao Ming was when he hung up the boots. 
As we've seen, Asian talent has been arriving in the United States very scattered and spaced out over time. A total of 18 players of Asian descent out of the more than 5,000 players who have played in the NBA during its history means that only 0.3% of the elite basketball talent comes from the Eastern continent. However, this proportion is currently at an all-time high. Currently, as many as four active players are of Asian origin, and in all four cases, they're players of considerable importance who are likely to have a significant part of their careers left. The Filipino Jordan Clarkson, who's a current player of the Utah Jazz, is an excellent scorer who, along with Larry Markkinen and Colin Sexton, is leading the Salt Lake City team to a season that exceeds the expectations of the franchise. With averages of 21 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists per game last season and at 31 years old, there are many teams interested in the shooting guard. And, by the way, Clarkson's one of the 14 players who shared a team with LeBron James and Kobe Bryant during his career. Meanwhile, Yuta Watanabe became the first full Japanese player to step foot on the NBA hardwood. After being a defensive menace in college and becoming a sharpshooter for the Brooklyn Nets, Watanabe didn't find much success in Phoenix and was recently traded to Memphis. But he should be on the NBA radar for a while longer. The next two cases are of players who, like Clarkson, are very important in their team systems. The Japanese-born Rui Hachimura re-signed this offseason with LeBron James' Los Angeles Lakers for a total of $52 million over the next four seasons, and in doing so has become one of the most important pieces of the Laker bench, if not the most important. Despite already playing his fifth season in the NBA, Rui's only 25 years old and continues to progress in offense and defense every season. The last case is really surprising. Because many people don't know that Jalen Green, the number two pick in the 2021 draft, also traces his roots from the Philippines. Although Jalen hasn't been proven to be very efficient, he has proven to be able to score very reliably, as well as being one of the most athletic players in the entire league. As if that weren't enough, the globalization of basketball on the world stage has allowed some players of Asian origin to make the decision to play college basketball for their development. Mongolian Mike Shravshamps is a 6'8 guard who's currently one of the most important players at the University of San Francisco, where he's averaging 8 points per game. Currently fighting for a position at the end of the second round in the 2025 draft, Mike could become the first Mongolian player in history to make it to the NBA. A similar case to Xavier Lee, who's currently listed in the second round of some major mocks heading into next year's draft, and could become the second Korean player to make it to the league. Or Keisei Tominaga, the Japanese player who withdrew from the last draft to try to get a better shot at making it to the NBA in 2024. Currently at the University of Nebraska, Keisei's averaging 14 points per game with good efficiency. Another candidate is the Chinese Barry Wang, who's playing his freshman year at the University of San Francisco, and although he's not having too many opportunities, he has time to progress in his game and complete his college cycle to expand his options to go pro. As with all prospects, many of them will end up falling short. But the fact that there are consistently a few prospects from Asia on U.S. scouting lists demonstrates the progress the NBA academies are making around the world. Currently, if we eliminate the oceanic countries that fall into the Asian category within FIBA, the rankings show that the continent has not yet realized its explosion in world basketball. Japan at 26th in the world is the highest ranked Asian national team in the FIBA rankings, followed by Iran at 27th, Lebanon at 28th, China at 29th, Jordan at 32nd, and the Philippines at 38th. Nations that certainly have been progressing over the last few decades, but still fall short of the talent needed to fight for world championships. But in the long distance race that is FIBA basketball, it's not as important to be competitive today as it is to show a trajectory that can help the next generation to reach the elite.